Just over 100 years ago, researchers from England opened up the tomb of King Tutankhamun. That's right, King Tut, the most famous pharaoh of the modern time. But he had been laid to rest 3,000 years ago, and many believe to this day his curse continues to take lives. What you are about to hear is believed to be real. Based on witness accounts, testimonies, and public record, this is Terrifying and True. I love those old black and white movies, especially ones like The Mummy. While the original Universal Monster movie is a little bit slow, there's a true, unmitigated fear about the way this creeping, undead creature comes for you. I've always found that to be eerie, and I've always found Egypt especially fascinating thanks to the pyramids and, of course, the Sphinx. Their folklore, their legends, and their vast history has influenced generation after generation after generation of entertainers, storytellers, and just all around people like me. And tonight, I'm going to give you the rundown and creep myself out. But we're going to get to that right after these quick words. Imagine being immersed in the artifacts and remains of an ancient pharaoh, his mummified corpse housed within a golden sarcophagus, his treasures sparkling under torches, the air thick with scents of incense, prayers still echoing through time, the tension rising as one struggles against their unease as some claim the objects possessed some sort of curse that has plagued them for centuries. It makes me shudder just thinking about it all. Legend holds that anyone who disturbs King Tut's 3,000-year-old tomb will suffer dire repercussions. Yet, is this really the case? Or was this simply created as a scare tactic against grave robbers? Today, we go after one of the most perplexing cases in history. We are going to delve into King Tutankhamun's curse, one which has mystified historians for generations while also captivating the public's interest. They say that the dead don't rest until their stories are told, and the story of Tutankhamun, the boy king of Egypt, is not a peaceful one. It's a tale of greed, power, and revenge. And it all started in the Valley of the Kings. The Valley of the Kings was a place of darkness and mystery where Egyptian pharaohs could be interred with all their treasures and slaves. Here also was where King Tut was laid to rest, along with all his gold and curses. But why were these curses so terrifying? Some have speculated that these spells came from gods who would punish anyone who interfered with Pharaoh's peace, while others argue such claims are just myths or fairy tales designed to dissuade people from raiding their tombs. However, the curse of King Tut has taken on a life all its own and refuses to die no matter the countless efforts to explain it away. And some still hold to the belief that it is a real force worthy of respect and fear. Let's first look at the facts. King Tutankhamun was born in 1341 BCE and reigned for just 10 years before succumbing to an untimely death at 19 years old. A team led by British archaeologist Howard Carter 
discovered his tomb in Egypt's Valley of the Kings in 1922. Discovering a tomb was certainly exciting, but people's excitement increased exponentially as mysterious events began occurring with those associated with the tomb's excavation. Soon, the entire world became gripped by tales of an impending curse upon anyone who would disturb the final resting place of the boy king. Lord Carnarvon, a wealthy British aristocrat who had funded the excavation, was first alarmed when he was bitten by a mosquito while visiting Egypt and later died from an infected wound. Many believed he was falling foul of a curse supposedly promising death to anyone who disturbed the tomb of the young pharaoh. Almost as though its curse were following Lord Carnarvon, waiting to strike at just the right moment, and eventually did. Lord Carnarvon was dead. No matter the money he had, the power and status he claimed, none of it could save him from something so simple as a mosquito bite. But was Lord Carnarvon really killed by a curse, or was his death simply a coincidence after opening Tutankhamun's tomb? With King Tut as the central figure, there seems to be little distinction between fact and fiction. After the tomb was unearthed, those associated with its excavation began experiencing mysterious and unexplainable occurrences. Lord Carnarvon's death was followed soon thereafter by that of his half-brother, who passed away suddenly and mysteriously just weeks later. Sir Bruce Ingham, who had studied Tutankhamun's mummy using X-ray technology, was found dead in his bed at just 54 years of age in 1960. Sir Archibald Douglas Reed, the radiologist who had examined King Tut's mummified remains, was later found dead in his bed with an odd expression on his face, an inexplicable smile, leading many to speculate if perhaps the cursed pharaoh had made contact or perhaps that some kind of poisonous gas had been administered through some unknown means. As we dig deeper into this mystery, it becomes apparent that King Tut's curse may have inflicted harm not only upon those involved with the excavation, but also their families and loved ones. One such instance involves Richard Bethel, Howard Carter's personal secretary, who died suddenly and in mysterious circumstances shortly after discovering the tomb. Soon thereafter came Carter's pet canary, who had also been present during the excavation, eaten by a cobra. Cobras are associated in Egyptian lore with goddess Wajet, who was thought to protect the pharaohs. In fact, another mysterious coincidence occurred upon Lord Carnarvon's death because upon finding his dead body, there was a cobra in his room, albeit, as far as we know, it hadn't attacked him. Another eerie occurrence was that, upon Lord Carnavan's death, Susie, his beloved dog, died simultaneously, while in England, thousands of miles apart. Later research also revealed that there had been a cobra found in the antechamber upon its first discovery. After King Tut's mummy was unwrapped, an ancient scarab beetle was discovered within. Scarabs have been traditionally associated with resurrection and eternal life. Lord Carnarvon was very fond of them, in fact, even wearing one on a ring until his untimely death. It's almost as if the curse follows you, waiting for the right moment to strike. Rumors began circulating about these strange happenings, and soon enough, the entire world was abuzz with talk of King Tut's mysterious curse. Was it real, or just something people made up out of fear and speculation? To answer this question, one must look back to 1922, 
when archaeologist Howard Carter and his team discovered the tomb of the young pharaoh in Egypt. As they entered, they noticed an inscription which stated, quote, Death shall come on swift wings to anyone who disturbs the peace of the king. Some believe the curse was real and intended to protect Carter's tomb from grave robbers. Others view it as nothing more than an elaborate hoax by Carter and his team to keep treasure hunters at bay. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was an outspoken believer of King Tut's curse and its significance. Best known for creating Sherlock Holmes, Doyle held strong beliefs in spiritualism and the paranormal, being convinced of its reality while writing books which claimed the existence of fairies, thus lessening any credibility to his claims. While the curse of the pharaohs, or curse of King Tut, has become an intriguing media and pop cultural topic, skeptics and historians alike have expressed doubt over its validity. One criticism suggests that Tutankhamun's curse may have simply been a way of explaining away deaths associated with his tomb at a time when Egyptology was at its height, leading to significant media attention surrounding its discovery. Skeptics argue that its story became sensationalized for publication purposes in order to attract readers and, of course, wealthy donors and benefactors to further excavations and research. An additional criticism suggests that the curse may have been used as a form of psychological suggestion, leading some individuals to believe they too were affected by said curse. This assertion is supported by the fact that many of those who died after discovering the tomb were elderly individuals with pre-existing medical conditions, or those of an age where passing away of natural causes was not unusual. Curses have also been widely criticized as being culturally insensitive and perpetuating negative stereotypes about Egypt and its people. The term implies that ancient Egyptians were primitive or superstitious when in reality they had highly advanced civilizations with extensive scientific understandings as well as many advancements in medicine. While the curse remains an intriguing subject of speculation and debate, it's essential to examine both evidence and historical context surrounding events of the purportedly cursed tomb. While conclusive proof cannot be provided either way regarding the existence of this or any other curse, media narratives love to run with such a sensational concept. And I'm no better. You're sitting here listening to me right now tell you all about it. There's a reason this story has lived for so long. However, skeptics such as magician and paranormal investigator James Randi have pointed out that the apparent curse may have been an example of confirmation bias. That is, people may have been more likely to attribute strange events to the curse because their beliefs had already been primed to accept it. Furthermore, the vast majority of the expedition participants did not die mysteriously. Many skeptics agree with him, and some maintain the curse was just an illusion to deter grave robbers and, more importantly, to drive tourism. As evidence for their argument, they point out how many of those involved with finding and uncovering the tomb lived long and healthy lives after the discovery. Howard Carter, the man who discovered the tomb, lived until he was 64 and passed away from natural causes. Other individuals closely related to the curse that lived long and healthy lives were Lord Carnarvon's daughter, Lady Evelyn Herbert, the daughter of Lord Carnarvon who financed the expedition that discovered the tomb. She lived until the age of 79. Ali Gaber, an Egyptian police officer who was part of the team that first entered the tomb, lived to be 84 years old. Dr. Douglas Derry, the radiologist who examined King Tut's mummified body, lived until the age of 79. And Dr. A. R. Pelly, the anatomist who assisted in the examination of King Tut's mummy, died at the ripe old age of 78. Those individuals were all closely associated with the discovery and examination of King Tut's tomb, and yet they all lived long, healthy lives. 
This is further evidence that suggests that the curse was nothing more than a myth. Randy, in his book An Encyclopedia of Claims, Frauds, and Hoaxes of the Occult and Supernatural, also notes that, quote, The average duration of life for those who should have suffered the ancient curse was more than 23 years after the curse was supposed to become effective. He further states, quote, This group died at an average age of 73 plus years, beating the actuarial tables for persons of that period and social class by about a year. The curse of the pharaoh is a beneficial curse, it seems. Additionally, many of the deaths attributed to the curse can be easily explained by other factors. For instance, many were the result of common infections or illnesses during this time. So where lies the truth of King Tut's curse? Or was it all just an urban myth? Neither side has evidence to back up their claims. However, it is easier to look back and find a curse in the information, if that's what you're looking for. There's still no definitive answer that can be given as to whether the curse caused any of these deaths or it was just a pure coincidence. Perhaps what is most striking about the curse of King Tut isn't whether or not it was real, but why it has captured so many people and for so long. Perhaps its appeal comes from ancient pharaohs whose mysterious lives make this tale especially captivating, or perhaps the concept that a curse could be so aggressive that it would attack anyone with any connection to violating the tomb. It remains certain that this legacy will continue to fascinate and intrigue generations to come. People's fascination can be seen through media reports. The press could hardly contain their excitement over this story while rumors and myths began circulating regarding its cause and effects. Some claimed Tutankhamun's mummy could cause physical harm, while others believed the curse was some type of supernatural force affecting our world even today. Hollywood joined in, capitalizing on public fascination with King Tut and his curse to produce horror movies and television shows about it, further fueling public fascination. Soon enough, myth became more famous than the actual discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. No matter your opinion of the curse or its validity, its influence has had a lasting effect on popular culture and archaeology alike. It caused a revolution within mummy tales forever, changing everything we knew about mummies as characters in stories. Do you believe in the curse of King Tut? Or are you skeptical, dismissing it all as mere superstition and coincidence? And would you dare open his tomb today, risking the curse's wrath? Or would you simply let sleeping kings lie? When it comes to curses and legends, they're a lot of fun. I generally consider myself a skeptic towards claims of the paranormal and supernatural. But that doesn't mean that I don't love a good story. And obviously, if you're here, you know that, and you love a good one too. King Tut brought about so much imagination during a time period when the average person, especially in the United States, could never hope to afford to go to, say, Africa or the Amazon. If you look back in that era, People read all kinds of pulp novels and radio programs about traveling to the Far East, traveling to the Amazon, and the adventures that would ensue. Alan Quartermain was known for having so many adventures, he was the fictional character in serials, short films that play before features, and his fictional adventures would become the inspiration for the iconic character later known as Indiana Jones. So out there listening to this right now, were you a big fan of these legends as a kid? Whether you're a millennial or a Gen Xer or a boomer, do you remember thinking about the curses across the ocean? How they were so far away, yet when you absorbed that fear of the unknown, you felt like a mummy could be living right down the street, waiting to get you. 
Simpler times, my friends. Terrifying and True is narrated by Enrique Couto. It's executive produced by Rob Fields. Produced by Daniel Wilder with original theme music by Ray Mattis. If you have a story you'd like us to cover on the program, send us an email at weeklyspooky at gmail.com. And if you want to support us in a very direct way, go to weeklyspooky.com and click on Patreon. For as little as $1 a month, you can support us and allow us to keep the spooky rolling and rolling and rolling. And I want to say a big thank you to our Patreon podcast boosters, folks who pay just a little bit more to hear their names on the show. And they are Bobbletopia, Megan Hua, Julia Kirsch, Christopher Sullivan, Brent McCullough, Gino Lyons, Steve King, Karen Wiemet, Jack Kerr, and Craig Cohen. Thank you all so very much, and we'll see you next Monday. <laughs>